My name is Beatrice Edu. Thank you for joining us. The principal of the Kumasi Technical Institute in the Ashanti region has given assurance to both parents and students that they are safe one week after clashes between some of the students and the police injured 14 of them. 48 students who were arrested in the incident were all granted bail last Friday. We'll hear from the principal shortly, but first, here is Erastus Asari Donko speaking to one of the students. Some students who were at the hospital have just been discharged and some are coming here. Uh, let me find out from him. He was at the Amuam Clinic yesterday on admission. Uh, how are you today? I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. How, how do you feel? Um, I, I feel very embarrassed. Because, um, because I'm an accident patient, I thought it wise to stay behind. Because in case anything happens over there, I can never run for my life. So I stayed behind, not knowing that the commotion will be, will be set inside the campus. Uh, so, um, so what did they do to you? They came to the dormitory. Were you at the dormitory? Yeah. They chased us into our campus and they broke our door into our dormitory. So where were you at the time? I was hiding inside the dormitory. By um, when they catch you, before you were explaining things to them, no, what they would have done to you would have done. So what did they do to you? Um, they used bet on me and they used the bottom of the gun to hit my chest. That caused this injury. So why did you come to the school today? Um, I came, uh, in fact, my mom said she wants to go home with me to, to treat me better because um, the, the school cannot uh, do anything for me as my mom would do. So we came to inform them, to, uh, to give us permission to leave the campus. So you have the permission now? Yeah, I'm having it. But um, I will leave before I fill this police report. So I'm taking it back to the hospital for the doctor to sign. After he signs, I bring it to the school and I will leave. In an interview with Joy News, Dr. Bell Kwapre appealed to the students to return to school as classes have resumed. Well, assuring them that they are safe and secured in our, hand, our hands and in, in the school. And so uh, we are starting classes to invite, we have started. So we just want to assure them that everything is normal and so they should continue. Unfortunately, um, some students, particularly these students, a lot of them have not reported yet, but I wouldn't blame them so much because of the fear and whatever. So I would use opportunity to, to tell them to come to school because everything is just as normal as everyday life that we have here. We, we, we had some of the students who were placed in cells um, uh, sporting injuries, even whilst in custody, mm -hmm. and they brought to the uh, hospital. Yeah. So now we still have some students in at uh, the various hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, uh, how will this um, opening of academic activities not affect them? It will definitely affect them. It will, because um, when your friends are studying and being taught in the classroom and you will be at the hospital, um, that is why we keep saying that the whole incident is a very unfortunate something that affects government, affects schools, affects parents, affects the, 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 the students themselves. And we think that um, um, they, we pray only for quick recovery so that they will be able to continue their studies with us. And we've been visiting them every now and then. Let's get the latest on this. I'm joined on the line now by Erastus Asari Donko. Erastus, you've been to the school this morning. What's happening now? Well, currently we are having, um, let me say, about 85% uh, of the school's population uh, coming over. But um, the other students, who are some of who are injured, uh, are continuing with review sessions with the doctor today, I learned. And so uh, many of them have also uh, sought permission to go home for further treatment. And there are also others who are psychologically uh, disturbed, I was told, and so they have requested for some time uh, to stay away from academic activity. 
So currently, uh, lectures are going on, but uh, partially, as uh, some of the students are still uh, trickling in. Mm, you talked about some of those who were injured and were going for reviews. Are there still some on admission? They were all, the, the last batch uh, was discharged yesterday, I learned, from the Anyam Clinic. I've been speaking uh, with the doctor, and uh, he says that the last batch was discharged yesterday, but then uh, the reviews have started today. Uh, so many of the students are coming into the hospital to uh, have their cases reviewed. There are those uh, who need psychological uh, counseling, if I should put it that way. There are those who whose wounds uh, need to be uh, reviewed and treated. And so many of them are coming to the hospital today. Uh, how about how, I'm, I'm talking those who are still going for the review, how is their health? Would you say it's improved as compared to the previous times they went to the hospital? Yeah, it's better. Um, I must say it's better. Uh, some of the students I saw the other time, uh, they are looking more cheerful uh, today. But you, you see, when you speak with them, you get the uh, inclination that they are still, uh, they are still trying to come to terms with uh, why they will be subjected to uh, that kind of abuse. And there are some who still think that uh, they do not know what they did. In fact, they, they, they were not part of the inter-schools competition. They were in their dorms. So they still don't understand why they are bearing uh, the scars uh, of, of beating by the police. Thank you very much. Love FM, Sirastu Sasori Donko. Moving on, the mother of the 19-year-old student of Aguna Senior High Technical School, who was crushed to death on Thursday, says she is yet to come to terms with the death of her son. James Bauer was run over by a tipper truck when the vehicle he was traveling in attempted to overtake another, crushing into an incoming tipper truck. Ashanti Regional Correspondent Mohamed Nuruddin reports. James Bauer's mother and siblings are visibly shaken by the tragic loss. Reports say the 19-year-old, together with some of his colleagues, opted not to join the school bus headed for the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. <laughs> it's so painful. I don't know. I don't know. The way he, he died, it's, it's too much. I can't even explain it. Even yesterday, I couldn't even talk because right now I don't even know what to do. By it's like if you are a man, you you have to be. So it, it's like I don't even know how to express how I feel. James was said to have been in a jubilant mood as the mini bus they had hired made its way to the stadium to cheer on some colleagues who were participating in the inter schools games. Is a day student. All the borders are here. The suit decided to arrange cars for them. We went for me metro bus. There's another car from Yariamwase. The car couldn't get passengers to, to, to Kumasi, to stadium. We were waiting for the student to join the school car, but decided to join their own car. So, even though he's a student, but he cannot push in the brim to school. Some accounts also suggest he had occupied a window seat and the vehicle was reportedly traveling at top speed. According to eyewitnesses who told them, who told my teachers who went there, that the bus in which those students were sitting was overtaking a taxi. And there was another tipper truck also overtaking the two of them. And this boy's body was outside from which he was sitting on the window he was, uh, they were sitting on the window that's what they said so he was sitting on the window shouting and the rest then the tipper truck just came you know the tipper truck have driving mirrors that are white they, they just came and pulled the hand out yeah pulled the hand and told that he dropped out of the car onto the road and the whole body of the tipper truck ran over him amenia pompaye who is the head of the technical department of the agona senior high technical school was among the first to visit the scene of the accident when we went there the police were taking measurement and those things and already two of the policemen have taken the body to ankase motri so how was the body like in fact when we went to the motri it was being put in a spalletting or those things they put the dead body but the mochi man said how the body is, you can't even open it. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reports for Joy News. The prison service says the inmate population at the Kumasi Central Prison has exceeded its minimum maximum capacity. 
Officials say they are nonetheless compelled to admit more because there are no options. They are, however, looking to early completion of work on new structures at Ankafo prisons to decongest the Kumasi facility. Irasta Sasaridonko reports. The prison's chief says last year's attempted jailbreak and a recent rainstorm destroyed already overstretched facilities. The Kumasi Central Prisons, which has a capacity for 700 inmates, presently accommodates 2,000. This represents about 80% of the entire prisoner population of 2,510 at six locations in the Ashanti region. This comprises 1,940 convicts, 485 remand prisoners, 14 inmates on trial, 55 foreigners, and 16 on life sentences. Mr. Ajato says despite the congestion, the service cannot refuse new admissions. It's not like a hotel when you go and the place is full, the management tells you the place is full. So long as the person is co co covered by the right documents, you are bound to take him. And you know Ghana's population is increasing. Those days, Ghana's population during Krumah time was about 7 million. That was when some of these facilities were put in place. And over the period, our population is now getting to 30 million. But we are still using the same facility. So it, is, it comes to reason that the facility, facilities will be overcrowded, and that is the cause of it. But we have put measures in place to try to correct the, the system. We have put, uh, uh, we have the justice for all program which goes around to see to people who have, uh, their cases have been delayed by the court so that they give them speedy trials. And apart from that, other measures are in place. A recent rainstorm ripped the roof off the prison and left some documents damaged. Provision of water became a problem. The National Investment Bank, local NGO Betulaba Foundation, and some individual philanthropists intervened. They financed rehabilitation of the facility and provision of mechanized borehole at a cost of over 30,000 Ghana cities. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Love FM. Kumasi. Now, some residents of Adringano suburb of Accra live in a state of fear following series of destruction of structures by persons claiming ownership of a large parcel of land occupied by the people. The residents maintain they legally own the land and are unhappy about this development. John News' Joseph Akable visited the place and has come through with this report. A notice can be seen on most walls in this neighborhood. It's a court order given sometime in August 2016, allowing Al Hassan Limited to eject and recover the land from all persons against whom judgment was obtained. I stand here comfortably close to about a 1.5 acre piece of land. Some days back, it would have been virtually impossible. The reason being that the fence wall that protects this piece of land and walls of persons who want to get onto the land has been pulled down. The residents have a different view. They maintain they rightfully own the land. Elizabeth Aja owns a block factory that had its fence wall pulled down on Saturday morning. Since 2003. And, and you bought it from who? I bought it from Okpowe uh, people. So if you ask to provide documents to show that this land belongs to you, you'll be able to provide it? Yes, I'll be able to provide it. Like Elizabeth, businessman Asafwe J has a similar view. Three plots. I have documents. So even I'm going to go on Monday, the, the chief uh, representative from uh, Teshin, who sold the land to us, uh, uh, Sovia, did that, and I will go and meet him on Monday. They both narrate what happened on Saturday morning. Well, I was in the house around 11 o'clock. Then my children, I heard boom, 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 boom. Then my children started, started calling me. When I came out, they said they are demolishing the building. But before that, about a month ago, they put a poster here saying that they have got a uh, court injunction and that uh, we should go to see their boss or the owner of the plot. The plot has been given to one company. I don't know where the company is, so I didn't go. They want us to renegotiate the price with the, the company. 
And I have already bought this product since 1990s. And I have developed part. So I came out to see, and truly, the bulldozer was bulldozing the whole place. After that, they went here, they were being accompanied by police and uh, some land guards. Should have exercised patience and uh, uh, inquire whether the land was bought from them or not from them, because if I didn't come to their office, they're supposed to have their document to know people who have bought the land from them and people who did not buy the land from them before they engage their exercise. But they didn't ask anything. They only went on doing their own thing. As many as 25 structures have had their fence walls already pulled down. A good number of the structures are under construction, while some are parcels of land whose fence walls indicate ownership. The persons responsible for the exercise were not available at the time of visit. Businessman Asafwe J, however, tells me they have served notice of pulling down the structures currently occupied by residents on Monday. What they retorted was that they will come Monday to start demolishing the buildings. That is the ones that you've already uh, developed? Yes, they will come and demolish them because the plot is theirs. Time will only tell whether these standing structures will suffer the same fate by Monday. And currently the demolition exercise is ongoing there. Joseph Akable is back at the scene and will bring you live feed very soon. Now, residents of Amasaman in the Greater Accra region have expressed frustration at the continuous lack of potable water in the area. They complain of spending all their income on water. Speaking to Joe News, the residents said they are overwhelmed by the situation. Here's a report by Na Anyoko Ajay. This is the source of water for the people of Amasaman. The source of this water is from the Songkwa River in Pukwase. Residents say they have endured various health conditions because of this water. As you speak, I can take you inside and look into the well. You see that the color of the water is typical brown, like a galamse, like a, a, a painting which galamse has been um, done over there. It's very, very bad. So considering that and our health issues too, we have to be careful with that. So to avoid any problem, we just go by the pure water, we use the pure water, in respect of the cost, we just, we are ready to bear it. And so that's it, we use the pure water in cooking, just for our health issues. I am a sobolo and egg seller. I use sachet water to prepare this, and it's costly. To get portable water, you need to wake up very early. The unclean ones result in sicknesses. Residents also called for a water treatment plant since this is the only source of water supply for Pokwase Amasaman at Chiaman Obeye and its environs. We have voiced out a lot. If they have laid down pipes so that they will connect up to now, there's no water for me. We are just waiting for the DD, for the water to flow inside of the pipe. Up to now, there's no water. So we don't know what to do. We are just hoping one fine, the lady will get some help from somewhere to you understand. This is the path leading to the river. Caretaker at the Songkwa River, Daniel Ni Abio, called on government to develop the area. The pumping machine we are using is very costly. At the form, formerly we were buying it uh, 700 Ghana cities, but now it's 1,500 Ghana cities. And moreover, the petrol too we are using is manpower, so we use petrol, and the petrol too is also very costly. And on some of the equipment we use to are very costly. So if the government or any individual can intervene and help us to achieve that goal. Now, and your court J's report from Amasaman. If you ever traveled along the Volta Basin, you are most likely to have been approached by a trader selling barbecue. Many people who try clam, known locally as adode for the first time, are amazed at the richness in every bite. Soft, yummy, tasty. A recent study reveals the seafood creature scientists call Galatia paradoxa is not just economically relevant, it is found to fight bacterial as well as aging. As contained in a report published in the global journal Cogent Chemistry, Kwasi Debra reports.
people take lots of supplements. Dr. Goffred Darko of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. To arrest um, signs of aging um, and all sorts of diseases. But if you realize, most of our medication, most of our medicines are plant-based. And we have so much of um, um, plants and animals in the sea which are not exploited. So in this our case, we were looking at antioxidant um, in, in um, snail species in the, in the, in the Bota Lake. And that is how come we went there to do this research. The study team obtained clams from La Beach in Accra, removed their shells and processed the flesh into juice. The extract proved highly effective in five of eight strains of bacteria and a fungus in which it was tested. They include Salmonella typhi, which causes typhoid, and Streptococcus pneumonia, a major cause of pneumonia. The scientists again found extracts could effectively salvage free radicals, substances which can speed up the aging process. Those mollusks, those, uh, let me call them snails, small snails, have lots of these antioxidant properties in them. Dr. Darko says the team is now focusing on isolation and purification of the agent. The levels of these antioxidants in natural organi I mean, in organisms are very low. Um, you need to concentrate them to a high level. And then you also cannot be killing these organisms for the sake of getting antioxidants. So the, highest, the higher level is what I, I said that after isolation, purification, and characterization, then you look at how best you can also synthesize from chemicals so that you don't, you don't go around killing the, all the snails. You're still watching news today on Journey. Stay with us. We'll be back very shortly with more stories.